but I will admit, so most of my experience um, with Le so Elasticsearch for people that aren't familiar is, uh, you know, it runs on Java. It's its own separate application. So you'll have a dedicated app for searching, um, which you know introduces some complexity, but also some power. Um, you'll have to figure out how to take your, you know, active record objects or whatever you have and index them in, and you know, go from a query result to an active record object, most likely. Um, so my experience doing this sort of thing has mostly been in a Node app, um, and I was kind of surveying the, the Ruby landscape. Back last time I took a look, there was Tire, which apparently is now Retire, which is also retired <laughs> and no longer active, which is cute, but not terribly helpful. Um, no, but apparently, so that guy has gone to work for Elasticsearch, uh, and they have a series of rail, uh, like Ruby gems of various levels of sophistication from basic transport stuff all the way up to like Rails integration. Um, and actually, a, a really good reference here. I, I mean, I started to prepare and just crib stuff from this, and then realized I should just show you this because it's better than I'm going to put together. Um, the Elasticsearch Rails gem has a series of templates um, that I would encourage you, if you're interested in this sort of thing, pull them down. There's a really basic example. There's a uh, kind of more intermediate example. I'm going to start there. The basic one is really quite basic. Um, and then a, a sophisticated one um, that kind of show you, you know, how you might integrate that into a, a Rails app. Uh, so yeah, let me just take a look at that. Here is, uh, this is the, OK. Um, so Unfortunately, the, uh, the scaffolded app, like, it generated 1,000 articles for you to demo your search on, and they all had the same content, which was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get that at all. Uh, so I just threw together, these are random Scrabble words, because um, I had nothing else. But yeah, well, yeah, I probably should have, whatever. I like Scrabble, though. And I had a Scrabble word list on my computer, because why not? Um, uh, yeah, so this is really basic. It's a list of articles that have a title and content, um, but you can search. Uh, it highlights the search results, um, paginates them pretty nicely. Uh, you can't see that because there's not going to be anything that has multiple pages. Uh, and also does not gracefully handle the empty query, which you should always do. Thank you. Oh, come on. There we go. It's impressive. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Quality That's software. Feature. Ship it. <laughs> um, so yeah, but uh, these search results do paginate nicely, um, which you would see if you ever had more than one page, and do search across uh, fields. They'll find things in titles as well. Um, so I mean, you know, relatively sophisticated feature set and, and super easy to get up and running. Here's all it is. Um, so that uh, that starting route just routed to the articles index. So here's the articles controller. I am not casting. What's happening? That's the tab. Well, it's just cast. Apparently. No. Where's the thing? How do I do this? It should not be hard. Maybe we should have a first session on Chrome cast. <laughs> I should not be leaving it. Um, seriously, how do you Chromecast the whole screen? Okay. Sorry, guys. There we go. Okay. Uh, and that's totally unreadable. Um, so the controller, super fancy, uh, calls article.search on the query you pass in. Uh, pagination here is just coming from Kaminari, um, which is similar to will, will Paginate if you've used either of those. Just a drop in pagination gem, just works out of the box. Uh, you will need to call. so. Um, the Elasticsearch gem is knowledgeable about those sorts of things and you know, gives you a reasonably offset and limited query set. Uh, and then the dot records call is all it takes to turn them into actual you know, normal active records like you would use ordinarily. Um, so all the sophistication here is in the article class method. Let's see that. Not a whole lot to it. Uh, most of the magic is here in include model and include model callbacks. Um, the model callbacks specifically will handle all of the indexing stuff for you. So when you save a new record, it will you know, cast it to JSON, save the JSON inside Elasticsearch appropriately. And similarly, when you update and delete, it'll make sure your index stays in sync without you having to do too much, um, you know, which is fine until you need to start batch indexing, and, but that's a ways down the road. Um, 
so this is, uh, you literally can do this with, like, if you don't define the search method, the basic one is OK and works all right. Uh, I have no idea. That's, that's in the gem. That's <laughs> what? So it's a design decision to differentiate from the Elasticsearch Rails from the Elasticsearch Rails. Uh, uh, Python, yeah. maybe? I don't have. I mean, that's a private syntax. Screams <laughs> don't use me. I'm, I'm a scary internal thing. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> but that is kind of what they're expecting there. Um, so all it really took here, uh, there is a massive DSL for defining queries in Elasticsearch. Uh, and there's an awful lot of power as to how you get records out. Um, much of it you won't use. Uh, I should point out, if you're exploring this stuff, um, there was a tool that I really liked called Sense that was like a Chrome plugin. You could just, uh, you, know, you had a nice API around it um, that you could just you know, query your Elasticsearch instance with. Uh, that is no longer available as a Chrome plugin, but has moved inside an Elasticsearch plugin called Marvel, which you can install. Um, but so for instance, I mean, None of this requires a Rails app. Like Elasticsearch is its own thing. It's a you know JSON API. You can hit it with curl or whatever. Um, you know here's. Right, so you, you have an app running in the back, right? Right. Yeah. So I've got this was. Uh, I, I installed Elasticsearch here, and I'm just running Elasticsearch bin Elasticsearch, and that spins up Elasticsearch. Um, and it, I mean, it is just a JSON API. Uh, so this is the status endpoint that tells you about all of the indices and shards that it has. I'm not going to get into details about what any of this means. So, I'm not that familiar with Elasticsearch, so if you could explain it a little. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So the primitives here are uh, Elasticsearch has a notion of an index, which is a big bucket of searchable stuff that's queryable in some particular way. Um, there's a whole lot of fine grain control you can give over, you know, how things are stored and you know how the results come out. That's Unfortunately, outside of the scope of the talk, but it, I mean, it has to do with like when you index a string, it's going to split it up into tokens, and it, there's some very sophisticated stuff you can have around like it being language aware, or you know, searching for you know n character substrings or whatever. Um, so you have a lot of control over how you know the text that you are indexing is actually stored, and thus how it's queried out. Um, I think maybe looking at the query DSL might give you some indication of what you can do. Uh, there's basic match stuff. So, I, I, yeah, I should get through the actual schema. Um, so you have an index, consists of a whole bunch of documents that are stored in there um, in some fashion that you can query out. Uh, is, that, is that all really need glossary-wise? Index and document, really? I mean, those are like pretty much the core. That's, that's the main thing. Um, so basically, it's a big bucket of JSON objects with good ways of finding them out. Um, so you have match queries, which are more or less what you'd expect, but are you know, good about finding sub-tokens and things. Um, fuzzy searches, geo queries, uh, and oh, a ton of ways of combining those things. Um, yeah. Uh, a, a dizzying number of options. Um, so th this is an example of how you might uh, generate a slightly sophisticated, sophisticated query. This is a multi-match query. So if we are searching articles for some query, so query here will just be a string. Um, the way to read this is we'll do a multi-match query looking for the string, which is query. Uh, and we're going to look across several fields. Um, I guess a query doesn't have to always be executed against a single index, but typically that's what you're thinking of. Um, so this will look across your index, which Again, th at the end of the day, they're just JSON objects. Um, I mean, you might have one index per model, but nothing dictates that you do. So if you have several models that all have a title and content, you can throw them all in this bucket, and then your results will all you know, come back as this heterogeneous list of, of different types. Um, so n normally, there is some complexity there about figuring out you know, how do you take that JSON blob and turn it into objects of the right type if you want actual objects. But the, if you're in the Rails world, the gem will handle that for you. Um, the caret 10 syntax there is boosting. So we're going to consider things much more relevant if the title matches our query than if the content does. Um, sensible default. Um, highlight is the special bit that we pass off to Elasticsearch so that the results include some information about what part of the string matched. Um, and it you know, includes them wrapped in EM tags. 
So that really is the entirety of what it takes to power that. And I mean, there's some view logic. Um, Is it? No, oh, okay. Uh, so view logic, but it is really pretty basic. Um, if we have a highlight, try and highlight some stuff. Page through the collection. I mean, no, no, nothing fancy is happening here. Um, so really, I mean, most of the heavy lifting is just you know handing it off to Elasticsearch and then letting the gem be smart about marshaling objects. Uh, does that much make sense? Some questions there. If I have a model, if you have uh, some sort of search across models in one specific kind of different way to do search. Yeah. Uh, so my next example will include that. So I'll show you that next if everybody is cool with this so far. Nice. Um, so let me kill that. Kill that. Um, so here is another app that I will now spin up. Um, same deal, this is the more advanced version. I, I will say the, the scaffolded stuff is kind of fiddly and didn't work quite out of the box for me, so I had to tweak around with it a bit. Uh, if you have trouble, let me know and I'll be glad to help you out here. This one uh, gives you a lot out of the box, including like sidekicks so the indexing runs and a background job and you know, nice things, but it, it does bring in some complexity. Um, yeah, I am tiny. Sorry. So here is that app. Uh, okay. So we have a lot going on here. You can search, uh, highlighting still. Um, you have faceting to show you, like among the results, 135 of them were in opinion, 66 were in US. Similarly, fasting on authors, you can drill down and navigate within that. Uh, date ranges, um, optional search and comments, it's a comments match, sorting, pagination, whole lot going on here. Uh, the view code is really gross. But honestly, the models are still not that bad. Um, the main thing this one does is extracts out, so uh, like here's your article, this, oh sorry. This is the main searchable thing. Um, we have lots of relationships now, but mostly, like the only logic that's in here is uh, some stuff about you know when, when relationships change, we're going to re-index the document. Indexer is just the background worker that's you know handing that stuff off. Um, and here, all of the magic is in searchable, uh, and you'll notice lots of no, not lots. I thought lots. Hmm. No, that's comment. Um, what you can do if you, uh, if you have a lot of things that you are planning on putting into one index, you can extract a concern like that and just have several different models include you know, whatever that module is. So here's the searchable concern. Um, you know, n nothing is stopping you from including this inside you know, several models so that whenever any of those models get saved, they all go into the same index. Um, Obviously, that only makes sense if, like, if if you're querying on description and they all have a description or something like that. But uh, th that sort of thing would work fine. Um, so this is just a mix-in. Um, you know, anything that includes this will have the Elasticsearch model. Uh, this is telling it we're going to put everything in one index. That's just the application name, comma, the environment. That's a good idea. You don't want your production and development data getting mixed up at any point in time. Um, Elasticsearch can be kind of dangerous. Uh, it, it gets a little clever about finding other clusters that are running. Uh, watch out for that. They will be. Yeah, they will. And bad things might happen. Um, this is showing you a little bit kind of more sophisticated. You know, the, in the last example, I didn't tell it anything about what the data coming in was going to look like and how it should index it. Um, you could specify that this way, so I'm, I'm going to set up this index with a specific mapping and tell it to expect, um, you know, it indexes a title field in a certain way. It's going to use a simple tokenizer. Um, uh, Snowball Analyzer is another one of those. That, that This gets to a lot of fine-grained distinction of how exactly it's storing, querying stuff out that's, again, kind of out of scope, but there's a lot to read up on there. 
Um, but yeah, just kind of giving it some clues as to what to expect. Uh, some logic about you know whenever a model gets committed to re-index it appropriately. Um, as index JSON is the hook that the Elasticsearch Rails exposes to control, like given a model, what is the JSON I actually produce that gets stored in Elasticsearch? So here for anything that's searchable, what I'm really going to include is authors, full names, uh, and then comments on that object with some stuff there, and then throw in categories. So just building up a JSON blob that'll get saved. And uh, here we see, remember that in the last example, the search was this JSON object. Um, at the end of the day, that's what Elasticsearch is expecting. But here, I mean, this shows you one approach to building kind of a more sophisticated one based on some options here. Um, so you may filter, which is pretty much what you'd expect, uh, depending on the options that are, sorry. Here's the thing I want. Um, right, so th this is building up a basic structure. We're, we don't have a query. We are going to highlight everything. We aren't necessarily going to filter anything by default. Uh, all of our results, we will facet which was the side navigation, right? The counts of various things relevant to our query set. Uh, so we'll facet across categories, author names, and you know, publish weeks. Um, if we have a query, we're going to throw that into the query part of that JSON object we're building as a Boolean query. Uh, Boolean lets you essentially and or or together some stuff. So it should match, uh, again, same sort of highly weighted title, not so highly weighted abstract, and even less not so highly weighted content. Um, if we're sorting, we can add a sort. All right, I think this is all sort of what you'd expect once you get your head around defining queries in terms of a weird nested JSON object there. Um, Oh, suggest is another nice thing that Elasticsearch gets you out of the box. Um, so it can give you this sort of thing. Uh, if you search for something that's potentially misspelled, it will send back suggestions. You just have to ask for them. So here we can autocorrect that. So really quite a lot of power out of the box. Um, and seriously, a daunting number of configuration options. Um, but it's an impressive bit of software. Uh, that's a little scattered, but any questions? Anything in particular people would like to see? You still have to dig into a lot of search stuff, even though you're using this, right? Or can you set the configuration settings up front? Uh, which configuration are you talking about? Do you have the configuration? For Elasticsearch itself? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I am just running Elasticsearch with the default settings. Um, yeah, so there is also a lot of tuning you can do for Elasticsearch and for the JVM and uh, all of that. Uh, that mostly gets into production considerations. Um, I think you know, when, when you're getting started, mostly like the first thing you want to think about customizing is the way that stuff is indexed, because that will affect you know, how you can query and how you can query efficiently. Um, that, you know, with this Elasticsearch model gem, you can do it in line by defining a mapping. Uh, Raj mentioned Chewy to me today, which I was unfamiliar with, but it apparently takes a slightly different approach to that. Do you want to talk about that? It's um, just easy to, for this stuff. It cleans up a lot of the, the JSON stuff. So yeah. it's, been, it's lighter weight than tired and makes some better design decisions, but basically you don't have to write as to JSON. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry. If that's not a good thing. Um, I hope, like, obviously this is gross and long, but it's I not terribly complicated at um, and so the point is just if you prefer these being kind of YAML configuration files, that's a sensible uh, way to approach it. And so there is a, a gem called Chewy that lets you kind of work on things that way. Now, I'm not familiar with Elasticsearch, but the, how does it compare to, say, Solar? I have no experience with Solar. 
I mean, they are solving similar problems. Um, I'm not terribly familiar with the way Solar goes about it. Uh, superficially, I gather it uses XML instead of JSON, which I always find kind of gross, but. It could be completely wrong. And it could be, yes. Uh, no, 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 you mean, uh, but JSON. No, I also could be completely wrong. Uh, okay. I think, I think they're, both, they're both based on the scene. Okay. Yeah. I think one was, Elasticsearch's big thing was that it was distributed yeah. PC out of the box. Yeah. And then recent blocks. So like, <laughs> And Solar made it difficult. Like, you had to do some crazy configuration things. And now I believe Solar is there. Uh, they've made some changes in their design that lends like, themselves to that model. But Elasticsearch basically said, hey, here's this notion of a cluster, and this is the optimal big size of shards. And it makes it easy to understand that. Though. Yeah, so really, I think at the end of the day, Elasticsearch is basically a convenient JSON wrapper around Lucene with smart options about clustering. I mean, th those are its big value propositions. I, I've, I've never actually used Lucene directly, but uh, that's the sense that I get, at least. Um, am I thinking of Sphinx when I'm saying the XML thing? I might be. I mean, uh, yeah. Solar does do XML. But, yeah. It does. Basically, like, Apache or, or I was copyright to Lucene, and then they did Solar, which is like document storage that's searching database with Lucene. So people are like, oh, let's do Elasticsearch search instead of Elasticsearch. search. And I think for the distribution part, you know, yeah, it's like a semi so solar to handle the uh, batch routine is pretty much taking the solar project and saying that's going to be the built in search and they'll handle the distributed nodes part. Uh, for you. So that could be an interesting one better. Yeah. Using React, you get solar search built in. Not to be confused, but I think there's another project called like. React search has been around for a couple of years. It's probably really not good. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which is different from like their. Wait, so React? React. R. Oh, R I A K. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm familiar with like React, but uh, yeah, the, so the search thing like, is a like React a text search plugin that's been around for a while that's like really bad. <laughs> but then they're like releasing a new product that is like proper. We've seen integrated like full text searching. So they don't really. It's supposed to kind of be like an elastic search quasi. Editor, but with like the actual guys using like real consensus algorithms instead of yeah. uh, Zen Disco's. Uh, <laughs> Though there is, there are things for Elasticsearch to fix the Zen Disco. Now that is a great struggle work on it. Um, oh, I should mention, I didn't show Marvel today. Okay, um, so Marvel is a really cool tool if you're playing around with Elasticsearch. Uh, so it is a plugin, but installation, well, it's now non free. Uh, so I don't know if you have 500 bucks to drop on a production one, but uh, installing it locally is a pretty easy uh, just bin plugins i Elasticsearch. Something like that. Oh, I already installed it, so never mind on that. Um, but yeah, you can just install the plugin, nope, and then boot up Elasticsearch and go to your Elasticsearch instance. Um, so it uh, builds a nice dashboard on Kibana, if you guys are familiar with that, um, which is a charting. I get, Kibana, like they're part of Elasticsearch now, right? So um, if you are looking for some way to build dashboards around Elasticsearch, that would probably be a good place to look. Um, so lots of good insight into you know, documents in your indices, number of indi indices you have, uh, JVM load, like all kinds of uh, useful monitoring data. And like I mentioned, the, the Sense app that I liked has now been integrated inside this tool. Um, so this is a really good way to kind of explore uh, you know, both your data um, and Elasticsearch itself. So I can just, uh, what? Why doesn't that work? Weird. Okay, so uh, status will show you a high level overview, but among other things, they'll show you the indices you have. So I have uh, this search app application development, which was that generated index name. Um, 
it's super smart about autocompletes, which makes this really pleasant. Um, so you can get endpoints, and it knows what you probably mean there. Uh, I don't think this should be a post. Uh, and then, like I said, your, your query is a JSON document that it will help you construct. Um, and again, this is great tab autocomplete stuff. Um, so this is just a simple match all. Here's a dump of everything in the index, except it's paginated, so it's only going to return the first, I think, 10 by default. But there is an article. So, so this, this is. Uses some test building or query. Yeah. Basically, dump that JSON right into it. We're doing actions. So this gives you some idea of what. The, this source field is essentially the blob of JSON that Elasticsearch is storing that represents the object. Um, so this one didn't have authors or comments or categories tagged. Um, I think that's anyone, but here's a, an article with content and everything. Um, you know, y your whole query DSL is available here and also hinted at. Uh, so you could do a you know a bool query that should match like that that whole thing. I don't remember this well enough to try and make up one on the spot. Um, but this is a really great tool for you know poking around and trying out some queries. Uh, it's free in development and uh, licensed for production. I am not sure on pricing, but a non-trivial cost. Uh, but I mean, if if you are just using it for exploring your development stuff, that's free. Um, and I, I think that is a good way to poke around and try out, you know, getting comfortable with the DSL. Uh, I don't know if you want to like if you prefer working at the Ruby layer where you don't think about the DSL quite as much, or really do want to get to know it better. Uh, kind of depends, but. Yeah, how do you spell that? Is it just like Marvel, like the? Yeah. 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 They really like Marvel. Yeah, yeah, I think the. Yeah. Uh, so, so when you spin up like all the shards yeah. after Marvel characters, and then you <laughs> find some really obscure ones. <laughs> Yeah, $500 a year for your first five notes in production. It is a great tool. Like, don't get me wrong. Um, it is well put together and informative. Uh, but it, it used to be free. $500 is a lot more than free. But, yeah. Um, OK, any questions on anything? Uh, and at that one point you had mentioned being smart about the way you define your index or build your index. Are there any anything you would suggest watching out for that would result in really slow query responses? I, the thing that tripped me up the most getting started on it was was not so much like performance related things as kind of understanding what the tokenization is doing. Because like when you index something, it will you know filter out stop words and punctuation and and store you know the post processed version of that, and that's what it queries against. Um, so there is a distinction that's important between queries and filters. Uh, when you query for a text string, like you do one of those like match queries, it will take your text string and also run it through the same set of analyzers to, to come up with you know whatever token set that it's ultimately querying. Um, it, if you try and filter against a text string, and it seems like you index the text string, and then you filter for that, like, that text string. If it's something like it pulled out a stop word in the middle of that, like that filter is just literal. Like it is not processed. Um, so things that you might think should hit won't because of that. I, I, I pounded my head against the wall for a little bit about like not getting results that like should have been there uh, because of that distinction. Um, and, and in general, I, I would I would read up on the query versus filter distinction because there are other some other subtle points. Um, I, so. One of the other main ones is like queries are scored, and, and so it can be ranked on score. Filters are just like it matches or it doesn't, so there's no scoring there. But because filters are not contextual, they can be cached. So if it is something that is kind of performance critical, you might like. There are different use cases for both, and it's it's good to understand that. I will say the docs are pretty solid, uh, you know, and worth thumbing through when you're getting started. Um, I think that was the most confusing point for me, probably. Uh, you guys used it any other? 
don't work on the mass, it just really blows for me. There's got to be a better way to do that. Doctors probably have more info. If you're planning to know more about that scale, this guy's got every more story in the book. I guess the really useful thing are the aggregations now. Um, you can do submissions and these things like that. Uh, as well as um, assets. Uh, yeah. If you want to like, start with the work file, it's a very, very easy way to do that. You're going to load your computer, and you can start with whatever you want to do. Yeah. Um, and you can do the things I guess if you're going to do the word cloud, remember that James brought up the analyzer, so you might want to have multi fields. <laughs> multi fields, this feels very official. <laughs> Got a whole lot less kind of Exactly, right. Yeah. Uh, if you ran across multi fields, basically you have one field that's analyzed by Elasticsearch's default analyzer snowball, I guess, and the other one, which is not, so you can have a word cloud populate of words. Like, for example, if R and B is in your index, you don't have R and B as separate words. If you use the right field, you have R and B. There's a lot of little gotchas uh, that'll get you. <laughs> um. Yeah, I guess I didn't mention too much about the fast API. You, it is the thing that powers those side lists of, you know, I have this query set, and then amongst those, how many different categories that I have, how many different authors that I have. Um, you can do a lot of powerful aggregation stuff using facets. Um, and again, I'll you know refer you to the docs for more. Um, there are a number of people that seem to be using Elasticsearch solely for faceting and not really much about searching. Um, oh, uh, one of the other things that I found interesting that uh, it's one of those like if it fits your use case, you're super excited about it, and otherwise you may not care. Uh, there's a percolate feature where you can register a query, and as documents are indexed, it'll respond back if it matched any of the stored queries, um, which was just a slam dunk exactly what we needed in an app that I was working on because we had like kind of alerts that we wanted to pop up, and so a user could like. You know, run their search and then not find anything, we could just really easily say, oh, do you want to just watch the search? And then we'll just register it as a percolate thing and just email them when stuff comes yeah. in. Um, I don't know how useful that is, but I thought it was nice. Yeah. 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 Anything else? I think we're late enough for that. Huh? That feature sounds so good. I just said, where do I send the check? Or is it a credit card on file? <laughs> I know. It's like buying a beer if you want. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, so I, I think it's late enough that I probably don't want to try and like live code in a feature. But I will mention. Uh, so uh, over the weekend, a couple of us hacked on a tracker for this group uh, where we're kind of like taking suggestions for topics that people would find interesting. Um, and it would be nice if we could search that. So if somebody wants to put in a pull request, uh, I would be glad to take a look at it. Um, and in general, as always, like help give me feedback about like formats or topics or whatever you guys would like to hear more of to make these sessions informative to you. Uh, so it's not up yet. Uh, I'm waiting on a few. Like it is totally bare bones. Like there's no styling or anything. Um, uh, there are a couple more features that I want to get finished uh, that I think some people are working on, some of them, and I'll you know finish them up in the next week or two here, if, if not. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll make this promise. Uh, before the next main Ruby group meetup, I'll have an app up and live that people can actually you know submit stuff on um, and get some feedback. So if you are interested in working on that, uh, the, there is a GitHub repo up. I think it's just it's under mine, right? Yeah. OK, so it's just under James Debs. Um, so what do you have name? Yeah, uh, it's it's <laughs> air. Like I'm using. I got tired of saying Atlanta Intermediate for everything, so I've just been calling it air. Um, so it's air tracker, but that's not nearly clever enough for me. So, so, yeah, good. air tracker. Yeah, but uh, air watch. That's a good name. You might no, sell for a billion or so dollars. You just pivoted into a real product, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, but seriously, uh, like if you guys are looking for some excuse to contribute open source, uh, I'd like I'll take a look at pull requests gladly. Um, so and if there's a feature you'd like to see, you know, 
bug and feature requests welcome on that one. This video has been sponsored by Rietta Incorporated. Learn more today at rietta.com.